Chapter 2 The Council with the Munchkins She was awoken by a shock. So sudden and severe that if Dorothy had not been laying on the soft bed, she might have been hurt. As it was, the jar made her catch her breath and wonder what had happened. And Toto put his little cold nose into her face and whined dismally. Dorothy sat up and noticed that the house was not moving. Nor was it dark. The bright sunshine came in through the window, flooding the little room. She sprang from her bed and with Toto at heels ran and opened the door. The little girl gave a cry of, of amazement as she looked about her, her eyes growing bigger and bigger at the wonderful sight she saw. The cyclone had sent the house down very gently for a cyclone, in the midst of a country of marvellous beauty. There were lovely patches of greensward all about, with stately trees bearing rich and luscious, luscious fruits. Banks of gorgeous flowers were on every hand, and birds with rare and brilliant plumages sang and fluttered in the trees and bushes. A little way off was a small brook, rushing and sparkling along between green branks and murmuring in a low voice very grateful to a little girl who had lived so long on the dry grey prairies. While she stood looking eagerly at the strange beautiful sights, she noticed coming towards her a group of the queerest people she had ever seen. They were not as big as grown folk she had always been used to, but neither were they the small. In fact, they seemed about as tall as Dorothy, who was a very well-grown child for her age. Although they were, so far, as looks go, many years older. Three men and one woman, and all were oddly dressed. They wore round hats that rose to a small point a foot above their heads, with little bells around the brim that twinkled ever so sweetly as they moved. The hats of the men were blue. The little woman's hat was white, and she wore a white gown that hung in pleats from her shoulder. Over it sprinkled little stars that glistened in the sun like diamonds. The men were dressed in blue, of the same shade as their hats, and wore well-polished boots with a deep roll of blue at the top. The men, Dorothy thought they was about as old as Uncle Henry, for two of them had beards. But the little woman was doubtlessly much older. Her face was covered in wrinkles, her hair was nearly white, and she walked rather stiffly. When the people drew near the house where Dorothy was standing in the doorway, they paused and whispered amongst themselves, as if afraid to come further. But the little woman walked up to Dorothy, made a little bow, and said in the sweetest voice, You are welcome, most noble sorceress, to the land of the Munchkins. We are so grateful to have you killing the Wicked Witch of the East and setting our people free from bondage. Dorothy listened to this speech with wonder. What could the little woman possibly mean by calling her a sorceress? And saying that she had killed the Wicked Witch of the East? Dorothy was an innocent, harmless little girl who had been carried by a cyclone miles from home. She had never killed anything or anyone in her life. But the little woman evidently expected her to swear. So Dorothy said without hesitation, You're very kind, but there must be some kind of mistake. I have not killed anything. Your house did, anyway replied the little old woman with a laugh. And that is the same thing, see? She continued, pointing to the corner of the house. There! There are her two toes sticking out from under the block of wood. Dorothy looked and gave a little cry of fright. They were indeed just under the corner of the great beam. The house rested on two feet sticking out, shod in silver shoes with pointed toes. Oh dear, oh dear! Dorothy cried, clasping her hands together in dismay. The, the house must have fallen on it. Whatever shall we do? There is nothing to be done, said the woman calmly. But, but who was she? asked Dorothy. She was the wicked witch of the east, as I said, answered the little woman. She has held all of the munchkins in bondage for many years, making them slave for her day and night. Now they are all set free, and we are grateful to you in the favour. Who were the munchkins? inquired Dorothy. They are the people who live in this land to the east, where the wicked rich ruled. Are uh, you a munchkin? asked Dorothy. No, but I am their friend. Although I lived to the land of the north, when they saw the witch of the east was dead, the munchkins sent a swift messenger to me, and I came at once. I am the witch of the north. Oh, gracious, cried Dorothy. Are you a real witch? Yes, indeed, answered the little woman. But I am a good witch, and the people love me. I am not as powerful as the wicked witch who once ruled here. 
or I should have set the people free myself. But I thought all witches were wicked, said the girl who was half frightened at facing a real witch. Oh no, that is a great mistake. There are only four witches in the land of Oz, and two of them who live to the north and south are good, witches. I know this to be true, for I am one of them myself, and I cannot be mistaken. Those who dwell to the east and west were indeed wicked witches. But now that you have killed one of them, there is one wicked witch in all the land of Oz, the one who lives to the west. But, Dorothy said after a moment's thought, Aunt Em told me that witches were dead years and years ago. Who's Aunt Em? inquired the little old woman. Uh, she's my aunt who lives in uh, Kansas, where I came from. The witch of the north seemed to think for a time, with her head bowed and her eyes upon the ground. Then she looked up and said, I do not know where Kansas is, for I have never heard that country mentioned before. But tell me, is it a civilized country? Oh yes, replied Dorothy. Then that accounts for it. In the civilized countries I believe there are no witches left, nor wizards, nor sorcerers, nor magicians. But you see, the land of Oz has never been civilized, for we are cut off from all the rest of the world. Therefore we still have witches and wizards among us. Who were the wizards? asked Dorothy. Oz himself is the great wizard, answered the witch, sinking her voice into a whisper. He is much more powerful than all the rest of us put together. He lives in the city of emeralds. Dorothy was going to ask another question, but just then the munchkins who had been standing silently by gave a loud shout and pointed to the corner of the house where the wicked witch had been laying. What is it? asked the little old woman and looked and began to laugh. The feet of the dead witch had disappeared entirely and nothing was left but the silver shoes. Mm, she was very old, explained the witch of the north. That she dried up quickly in the sun. That is the end of her. But the silver shoes are yours and you shall have them to wear. She reached down and picked up the shoes, after shaking the dust from it and handing them to Dorothy. The Witch of the East was proud of these silver shoes, said one of the munchkins. And there is some charm connected with them, but what is, what, what it is, we never knew. Dorothy carried the shoes to the house and placed them on a table. She then came out, and one of the munchkins said, I am anxious to get back to my aunt and uncle, for I am sure they will worry about me. Can you help me find my way? The munchkins and the witch first looked at one another, and then Dorothy, and then shook their heads. At the east, not far from here, said one, there is a great desert, and no one could live to cross it. It is the same in the south, said another, for I have been there and seen it, the south of the country of the Quadlings. I am told, said the third man, that it is the same at the west, where the country and the Winkies live is ruled by the wicked witch of the west who would make you her slave if you had not passed her way the north is my home said the old lady and it is the edge of some great desert that surrounds this land of oz i am afraid my dear you will have to live with us dorothy began to sob at this she felt so lonely among all these strange people her tears seemed to grieve the kind-hearted munchkins for they immediately took out some of their handkerchiefs and began to weep also as for the little old woman, she took off her cap and balanced the point on the end of her nose, while she counted, one, two, three. In a solemn voice, all at once, the chap came, changed to a slate, on which was written in big chalk mark, marks, Let Dorothy go to the city of emeralds. The little old woman took the slate from her nose, having read the words on it, and asked, Is your name Dorothy, my dear? Yes, asked the child, looking up, drying her tears. Then you must go to the city of emeralds. Perhaps Oz will help you. Where is the city? asked Dorothy. It is in the exact center of the country. And it is ruled by Oz, the great wizard I told you of. Is he a good man? inquired the girl anxiously. He is a good wizard. Whether he is a man or not, I cannot tell, for I have never seen him. How can I get there? asked Dorothy. You must walk. It is a long journey through a country that is sometimes pleasant and sometimes dark and terrible. However, I will use all the magic arts I know of to keep you from harm. Uh, won't you go with me? pleaded the girl who had begun to look upon the little old woman as her only friend. No, I cannot do that, she replied. But I will give you my kiss. 
and no one will dare injure a person who has been kissed by the Witch of the North. She came close to Dorothy and kissed her gently on the forehead. Where her lips touched the girl, they left a round shining mark, as Dorothy found out soon after. The road to the City of Emerald is paved with yellow brick, said the witch, so you cannot miss it. When you get to the land of Oz, do not be afraid of him, but tell your story and ask Tim to help you. Goodbye, my dear. The three munchkins bowed low to her and wished her a pleasant journey, after which they walked away to the trees. The witch gave Dorothy a friendly little nod, whirled around her left heel three times, and straight, straight away disappeared, much to the surprise of little Toto, who barked after her loudly enough as she had gone, because he had been afraid to even growl while she stood by. But Dorothy, knowing her to be a witch, had expected her to disappear in that way, and was not surprised in the least.